your true score of love and acceptance. Yet, while none of its suffering can be exaggerated, the fact remains that the cross greatest cause of anguish may not have been the nails impaling the hands and feet. The greater cause may have been its shame. Jesus Christ was a human being with emotion. The Bible says he suffered for loneliness, frustration, anger, and he experienced the feeling of abandonment. However, when he was on the cross, the shared, he shared in the most painful of all human emotions, rejection. He was rejected for who he was by the authorities who scoffed at his claim to be the Son of God. He was rejected by those who loved him when the disciples abandoned him in his time of need, when Peter denied him three times. He was re regarded worthless by those in charge at the insistence of the cross. Plates released a, no a notorious uh, prisoner, ba uh, Barabbas. For, that, uh, for the sake of political convenience, he gave into the cross demands to crucify him. In the end, only a few women and John stayed by him. When he was finally recognized and received for who he was, it was too late. Are you experiencing the uh, agony of rejection? Rejection is yet another aspect of suffering that can draw you into deeper intimacy and unity with Christ. Christ can sympathize with you and this shared suffering can be a major point of contact between the two of you because not only has he been there but he promises to only uh, to always be here with you and never ever leave you or forsake you so yes when it comes to rejection jesus gets it he understands big time and he is with you and in you right now ready to walk through it together jesus honestly i really desire that the people around me would fully accept me and unconditionally love me but that's never going to be reality is it I thank you for using this desire to draw me into a more intimate relationship with you who will never reject me and never leave me. Thanks for using the suffering of rejection to lead me to you, the true score of love and acceptance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Where Christ is in your suffering. As the sacrifice of Jesus Christ reached its climax, as the sin of the world were being paid for by his suffering and death, there was a moment where God the Father Almighty turned his back on Jesus Christ, his Son. On a spiritual level, Jesus Christ realized that his Father, with whom he has been intimately bound since eternity past had turned away. From noon until three in the afternoon darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabach, Tan, Tani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This suffering, the most spiritually ac acute of any suffering that one could imagine, was fully felt, but it did not last. When the sacrifice was complete and all that had been 
pro uh, facade uh, was fulfilled. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he be, uh, breathed his last, and his inseparable union with the Father was re-established. Jesus really did suffer in every way humankind does. By being separated from the Father, there is no doubt that Jesus suffered spiritually. We suffer a cloudy spiritual existence today as well. We see God only dimly when we finally leave these fr uh, freshly bodies behind. We will finally relate the, him, to him face to face. When Jesus ascended to the Father, he made the promise, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. We will experience suffering, yes, spiritual di dimness, yes, sti spiritual separation, never again. Jesus, I believe that you died completely paying the price for my sins. Thank you that this opens the way for continued spiritual intimacy with you. Would you show me what that means for today? In the hours ahead, lead me into a deeper experience of your ongoing presence in me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of Christ resurrection. Our Lord has written the promise of resurrection not in books alone, but in every leaf in springtime. Sunday morning, the disciples were still locked away in hiding hiding. The body of Jesus was still sealed securely in the tomb, so or so they thought. God had pro, uh, performed a miracle. Molecule by molecule, he def defied the natural laws. The resurrected cell walls purged toxins, replaced and decayed biochemicals, expelled microscopic scaven scavengers until the body was ready once again and with a breath the soul and spirit of Christ came to earth again supernatural by all means it was God's bless uh, God's business is supernatural res reversing decay and giving new life God's business is resurrection and those who are in Christ are part of it right here right now we were therefore buried with him uh, through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead uh, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a, a new life. If we have been uh, united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. This is all part of the incredible mystery of life in Christ. It's a mystery, but when we see it in action, it's undeniable. Several of years ago, right after Easter, this email said it all. Dear Pete Berisco, I was seven years ago Easter weekend that I was at the end of my downhill spiral. I had just spent the weekend choosing drugs over life and the custody of my first son, and I felt as though I, ha I had nothing left to live for. I cannot describe the overwhelming peace and joy that I experienced today. I was allowed to serve at two services and attended the third. 
it's like there is no other pla place I belong on Easter morning. These precious uh, women uh, met the risen Christ. Today she walks with him in forgiveness and grace and shameless worship. If you really want to see the resurrected Jesus, just look at people like her because she somehow was resurrected with him too. Jesus, you are God, able to do far more than I could ever comprehend. By faith, Lord, I accept that my old self was crucified and that I have been raised with you for new life in you. Make this mystery a re reality in my life today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Having faith in the resurrection, and I tell you that the evidence for the life, the death, and the resurrection of Christ is better authenticated than most of the facts of ancient history. E. M. Blake Locke, professor of classic at Oakland University. Christians in general seem to have a pretty good handle of on the theology of the cross i mean that's how we got into a relationship with god in the first place jesus died for us so that we could be forgiven so that we can relate to god on an intimate personal level but what about our theology of the resurrection? What if Christ was not raised from the dead? Let's, let's let the Apostle Paul answer that. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised for if the dead are not raised then Christ has not been raised either and if Christ has not been raised your faith is futile you are, you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. Again, I use it. If his body is still in the grave, faith is useless. We are still in our sins. None of us will be raised. And we are basically idiots to be pitied more than everybody else. But the list of objective evidence regarding the resurrection is substantial. Substantial. Jesus' body was dead. The stone was ruled away. The tomb was empty. The Roman guards were over. The, the grave clouds were present. Hundreds of witnesses reported what they saw. Books and books written on this topic make for great in, uh, in spiritual reading. If Jesus wasn't ready, it's game over but if he was and if we believe it then the game has just begun living god through the truth of your word and the power of the holy spirit give me genuine faith allow me to move beyond a superficial belief and begin to experience the mystery of the resurrection and all of its implications amen hallelujah amen what is god's will for you a number of years ago as i was studying paul's letter to the ephesians i became 
کپ تیویتد بای درز ریکورشنگ ریفرنسز تو گادز ویل این در فرس چپتر آف افیشینز ویلید اباد در ویل آف گاد هیز پریجر اند ویل در میستری آف هیز ویل اند در پرپس آف هیز ویل Then later in the letter, the apostles' readers are challenged concerning understanding what the Lord's will is and doing the will of God. The days in which we are living are unnerving for many of posi- uh, positively paralyzing for others. There is a dis- uh, destructive power of a pandemic has unveiled our f- fragility radical tensions have reached a, bil- a, bol- a boiling point and our climate is exhibiting intense and overpowering forces of nature so it is not surprising that some people are asking the question Is everything spinning helplessly out of control? The quick biblical answer to that question is of course no. The throne of heaven has not been vacated. The situation room is glory in glory is not in lockdown. God is still in charge and he has a plan super, uh, summarized by his stated intention to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. The scriptures I have referenced thus far could be described as God's macro plan for the created order, his sovereign will for his word and all that is in it. And rightly understood God's grand plan gives us hope and assurance but God also has mic- uh, micro plans for individual followers of Jesus for instance Paul was convinced that he personally was an apostle by the will of God Then Paul assured the faithful in Christ that it was God's pleasure and purpose that they should personally enjoy the adoption, redemption, and forgiveness that he planned to lavish upon them. But what God will for us and lavishing lavishly provides us for us becomes a reality in our own experience as we submit what we want to what he wants as the savior said to his father in get semane not my will but yours be done hallelujah we do this not grudgingly but gladly and wholeheartedly and the result of responding to what we know of God's will becomes a way for life that transforms our responses to the uncertain days in which we live there is no much more to ponder about God's will in these days which is why I want to send you a five message teaching series for Jill Pitt and myself entitled God's Will for My Life. Bible is a special resource will help guide, uh, will help guide you in the discovery of God's micro and micro plans for our world and for all your life in particular and one last thought before I go as many people have told me that they don't know how to discover God's will for their lives 
Here's a very simple way to start to discovery. Search the scriptures and behold, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That is not at all hard to understand and we can all respond to that instruction every blessing. The transforming power of the resurrection. What gives special authority to uh, the list of witnesses as the historical evidence is the reference to most of the 500 brethren still being alive. Saint Paul says in effect, if you don't believe me, you can ask me. There is no question that the Romans were successful in crucifying Christ. The Apostle John personally confirmed his death with he when he saw him jabbed in the side of uh, in the side with a spear uh, causing water and blood to flow from his heart. Many others saw his body wrapped and placed in the tomb. But Sunday re revealed a stone that had been ruled away guards who had fled for their lives, lives and an empty tomb. People started uh, seeing him alive. The Apostle Paul recorded that the living Christ appeared to Peter, the disciples, and more than 500 other people. Many of these witnesses were hostile towards Christ before they encountered him. The most notable of all these was the Apostle Paul himself, who encountered the resurrected Christ long after the fact. In his words, then he, Jesus, appeared to James, then to, te to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one ab abnormally born, for I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. This encounter with Jesus impacted Paul personally, transforming him from an arrogant religious leader into a humble, faithful servant, a man transformed by the grace of God. May it be the same for each of us. Dear God, Jesus, what a tragedy it would be if the proof of your resurrection became an object of my pride rather than fuel for my faith. I am truly nothing without you. It is only by your grace that I am what I am. I praise you, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Amen. The hope found in an empty tomb. It's Friday, but Sunday is coming. I love Peter. Not only is he, uh, he my namesake, but I can appreciate the way he was prone to live on the extremes. He was bald and boisterous when he was with Christ, but when he was separated from Christ, Peter was a wimp. He caved under the pressure, even covering today's questions of servant girls, denying that he had ever even known Jesus at all. We might look at the cross today as symbolic of some sort of victory, but it was devastating in the moment. The significance of Christ's death was the shedding 
of innocent blood, the perfect and final sacrifice for human sin. But what is the significance for us if he was raised? I can't answer that any better than Peter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of, of greater wo, uh, worth than gold which pr uh, perishes even though refined by fire may be proved genuine and may result in praise glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed what a co uh, con contrast yes Jesus had to die and we had to be crucified with him to get to this point but what a difference the resurrection made to Peter and what an, an uh, astounding difference it makes to us in the mercy of the Father through the resurrection of uh, Jesus God has given us two cru uh, crucial things new birth and a living hope where would we be without either of these Jesus, touch me with the truth today. Quiet my heart that I may ponder what you did on the cross. Ignite my heart that I may celebrate what you did through the resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to you, Jesus. Amen. What do we do with the cross? Getting to the good news. God's power alone could accomplish it. God's wisdom alone could imagine it. Yes, the cross of Christ is a marvelous display of God's every attribute, power, wisdom, justice, mercy, and love. But how exactly do we see God's great greatness through the brutal details of Christ's execution? In the Bible, Jesus has spent serious time exploring the sacrificial death of Jesus, showing you how something so unsightly reveals the secret of the great, greatest news ever known. To find and follow, God has placed a personal call on your life that no one else can fulfill. You will learn how God has a will and a plan for you and how the Holy Spirit empowers you to find and follow His call. Forever changed by the living Jesus, the resurrection gives my life meaning and direction and the opportunity to start over no matter what my circumstances. Information alone rarely changes lives. But when someone experiences the truth, their future is often changed for good. This is certainly the case of the disciples who went from frightened to fearless very quickly. So what happened? On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jew Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. 
This encounter with the living Christ transformed them from men who hid behind doors locked for fear of the Jews into an unstoppable team. His story and tradition show us that the disciples were tor tortured, exiled, and killed for their faith. James of Zebedee was beheaded in uh, after Christus 44. Philip was scourged, scourged and crucified in Phrygia. Matthew was murdered in Ethiopia. James was stoned and clubbed. Matthias, Judas' replacement, was stoned and beheaded in Jerusalem. Andrew was crucified in Edessa. Peter was crucified. But, but, but Lomo Mev was beaten and crucified in India. Thomas was thrust with a spear. Simon the Zealot was crucified. Judas of James was crucified in Edessa. John was exiled to Patmos. of people can testify to the change that the resurrected Christ has made in their lives. Yes, information is important, but a living relational experience with the risen Christ is most important. How would you, your life be changed if you had a fuller awareness of the resurrected Jesus? Risen Christ, I want more than just the facts that show you rose from the dead. I am open to experiencing you today on a personal level in any way that you choose. Amen, hallelujah, amen. He is risen. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die do you believe this today we remember the most important event of our faith the resurrection of christ it's the confirmation that every one of jesus promises is true and through it we have the wonderful promise that death is forever defeated as well as the hope of experiencing eternal life. From all of us here at Telling the Truth, happy Easter, every blessing. Amen.